How you doing, YouTube? Matt Massa Beer Reviews. Back with a little bit of the evil twin up of this piece. In the form of there, I always look forward to my daily commute to the grocery store. Um, yeah. Yeah, this must be super fresh. So this keep cold. No date on it, but loose references to self-quarantines, I believe. And uh, this is an 8% alcohol by volume. Double dry hopped, double India pale ale with Nelson and Mosaic hops. Comes courtesy of my boy Kyle from Brooklyn. He sent this off. I cannot remember the last time I had an Evil Twin Hazy. Um, especially since they started brewing out of their legit location. Pretty much every anytime you see these kind of labels with the basically photographs and some kitschy, kooky kind of title to it. It's their newer stuff. I'm curious. This is going to be my first one. So we'll see what's what. Label-wise, it's all right. It's just basically, this is, I understand it. I get there's uh, somebody out there who finds this to be super high art and, and very cool, but I believe this is just, let's take a picture, throw it on a label, and write some words so we don't have to worry about making kooky, fun label names. A little bit of laziness, but it is what it is. That looks like a hazy. It's not butternut squash suit, but she's definitely a hazy. Rich, orange in color, light yellow glow to her. Index finger, infinitely tightly compact head. So, let's get a nose. Man, that smells good. That really does smell good. It's running the gamut of all your kind of essential food groups when it comes to your kind of tropical hops to your citrus, but it really does lean a nice soft sown fruit somewhere in the middle there. So I'd say that's probably number one on the list with being flanked by that citrus and tropical fruit. Quite nice, actually. Not really much as far as bitterness. This is what I would construe as a juicy beer um, and, and very old school juicy, not like a saccharine sweet kind of confectionery kind of orangina kind of juicy, more like a legit kind of fresh street squeezed orange juice kind of juicy. And that's pretty much all I'm getting off of it is that rich kind of peach now kind of slowly working into a kind of a mango vibe. I think it smells quite nice. Let's dive in. Cheers. That does not suck. That really does not suck. So it's not, it's not this crazy epic mouthfeel. Probably in the grand scheme of things, when you hold up to a lot of new school IPAs, maybe a little bit thin. The hops, very uh, icky, sticky, weed-like, a little bit cattiness even to it. A little bit of uh, that cat pee kind of vibes going with it. The way that fruit comes off, it definitely has that nice kind of um, stone fruit, but really does kind of catch hold of, like, it marries the bitterness of that kind of green um, kind of weediness with a little bit of, like, mango skin, which comes off as kind of like a big cream component with a little bit of kind of grapefruit zestiness. It's kind of like a very old school East Coast IPA with very new school East Coast influences. I think this is a really fun beer, to be honest with you. Something I haven't had in quite some time. Yeah, sweet, but not super over the top. Residual sugar sweet. My cat's pet my foot. I didn't know what was going on right there. I got freaked out. Um, yeah, I like it. I think it's tasty. I think it rings true to a lot of old school East Coast. And when I say old school, I mean like early 2000s kind of East Coast IPAs. Bring a little bit more of those new school kind of tropical hops um, to the table. I like it. I think it's fun. It's super drinkable, even with it being 8%. Usually, most of the time, I'll be like, okay, 8%, this drink's below. It's weight class, so screw you for not drinking like a big beer, but something about it makes me kind of happy of how easily it drinks. Because it, even though it's thinner and not thick and whatever, it does kind of have an impact that is appropriate to its ABV level. So that I kind of dig. I think it's fun. I think it's tasty. And honestly, this might be... One of, if not the best IPA I've ever had from Evil Twin. Not that I've had a ton. I couldn't really rattle one off the top of my head that I really enjoyed all that much. And I'm sure I have. It's not that I haven't. But this one's pretty damn good. And honestly, a pretty fun foray back into what they do. Especially from their new location. Yeah, I'm a fan. I dig it. I like it. So there you go. Um, so let's talk about it. Is it one of the better uh, double IPAs I've had as of late? It's still not going to be King Shit of Fuck Mountain status. But it's worthy of being in a conversation, eating up towards the top. Value availability. Um, don't know what these go for. I think some of the evil... Well, I mean, during this whole time, you everything's brewery only, I guess. But you don't deliver it to your house because of COVID. I, I know their stuff hits shelves. I don't know if the newer stuff does. 
So Kyle, let us know what's what and leave you with if you like what we like this beer. If you like new school IPAs, if you like your headies, your second fiddles, sips of the world, um, but you want something that's a little bit more drinkable, but the same kind of ABV level, that's where this one lands. I mean, it has those kind of vibes, but a little bit more of old school and a little bit more new school. If that makes any sense whatsoever, you'll like this. So there you go. Another review in the books. Thank you yet again, Kyle, for sending it off. Down there if you want to talk about it. Massive beers if you want to check me out in the social media stuff. Beer Massive. Want to check me out in the whole podcasting thing. And hopefully you guys enjoyed the review. Hopefully you're enjoying a little bit of a evil twin right now. And hopefully see you next time. Cheers. <laughs>